Hello everybody and welcome to video number two of Evolutionary Milestones in which we're going to look at the origins of the, the material, um, where it came from, the, um, the life requires on Earth, and we're going to look at some processes by, by which abiogenesis, that is the origin of life, may have occurred. So let's jump right on in. So a key um, solvent that all life on Earth relies upon is water. So water is a really key molecule. And um, in order for abiogenesis to have occurred, there must have been water around. A key source of water was infall from asteroids and comets. Um, so asteroids and comets, such as those that are shown um, in this image here, the courtesy of NASA, um, are a very, very rich source of water. But there's also the potential um, origin of water on Earth through the degassing of hydrated mantle minerals. So as Earth cooled down, possibly it degassed, releasing water vapor. And the relative impact of those two potential sources for the water on Earth remains debated. You can find more details of that in the um, the two sources that I put on the slide here. The other thing that we need for life are organic compounds. That's compounds that contain carbon hydrogen bonds. All cells rely on this kind of compo compound. So where on early Earth could these compounds have originated from? Well, one source is input from space. So research over the last few decades has shown us that um, we find a, a rich repertoire of organic compounds, many of which are shown on this slide here from this source at the bottom, um, courtesy of Mark Sefton. Um, many inter, uh, interplanetary dust particles, comets, asteroids, and meteorites contain this wide assortment of organic compounds. So those compounds could have originated by falling into Earth from those um, extra um, extraterrestrial um, sources. And those compounds include amino acids, nuclear bases, methane, and hydrogen cyanide. So that's a potential source of some of the compounds that could have been the building blocks of early life. A second potential source for those organic compounds is earthbound synthesis. So the synthesis from simpler components of those compounds on the early Earth. And a classic experiment in this area was by um, uh, two scientists in the US called Uray and Miller, who um, took a series of steps to investigate this. They sealed what they considered to be a realistic primitive atmosphere into a experimental setup that comprised um, hydrogen, methane, and ammonia. So that's shown here. They used water to represent the early oceans, and they use an electrical spark to represent lightning, which you would have thought would have been quite common on early Earth. And they just le left that running for a week, cycling around this experimental setup. At the end of this that week, they demonstrated that up to 15% of the simple carbon that had been in their um, early primitive atmosphere had been incorporated into organic compounds. 2% of that had gone into amino acids. Those are the building blocks of proteins. So that was a really, that was a key experiment and a really exciting discovery that suggested and supported the idea that we can create increasingly complicated and complex organic compounds on Earth. Nowadays, the choice of environment that these um, two uh, researchers um, made, um, we don't think is necessarily accurate. We think it may be too reducing. The, the nature of the early atmosphere on Earth remains a matter of debate. But this experiment in general works and shows um, the synthesis of more complicated organic compounds in a range of different potentially realistic early environments. So that's where material might have come from. And then there are several theories for the origins of life, abiogenesis that exist. And for ease, I'm going to be placing them today into two general schools. One of those is primordial soup, as represented by this Campbell's uh, primordial soup um, a tin can. 
Now this primordial soup idea is an idea of the origin of life that is kind of cold and oceanic. It doesn't require high temperatures and it would have occurred in Earth's oceans. So what we're looking at in primordial soup type theories of abiogenesis is the accumulation of organic compounds in our primordial oceans. Those could have been then concentrated through freezing or evaporation um, and theref therefore become uh, higher in their concentration in our oceans. That could lead to reactions between our organic compounds that lead to increasing complexity. It's possible, and some theories suggest but others don't, that this could have occurred at the interfaces of minerals in these early oceans. But whatever happened, these reactions would have created bigger molecules. They would have been a form of polymerization. Some of these polymers that result could have acquired functions by chance. Okay, so you just create lots of different polymers, this whole kind of range of different potential um, organic compounds could have existed. And as soon as just one of those becomes capable of catalyzing its own replication, then bingo, you have the beginnings of life. So by catalyzing its own replication, I mean that it supports um, chemically uh, the creation of more copies of itself. Even if only a tiny fraction of those molecules in these early oceans um, are capable of doing that, those would become increasingly abundant because they're catalyzing their own replication. And that would lead to a primitive form of biochemistry and an evolutionary cascade towards more complicated um, reactions. So um, that is one potential source. And if you want to learn more about it, you should see the reading list for this course, um, which I've linked from the Blackboard um, site for 22101 if you're a student at the University of Manchester. If not, you're welcome to email me and I can provide you with some suggested reading. However, I wanted to highlight the other theories for how abiogenesis occur, and they can generally be placed into a second school of thought, which is the metabolist theory. So these theories of abiogenesis tend to be hot, they occur at higher temperatures, and they tend to um, be based around a volcanic type of origin of early life. And in these theories, um, primitive life would have been uh, metabolic. So it would have been characterized by a continuous chain of self-sustaining chemical reactions, okay? So we could be talking about simple compounds such as CO2, carbon dioxide, and CO, carbon monoxide, in the vicinity of mineral-rich hydrothermal systems. We're talking about things like black smokers, such as the, shown in this these images here, courtesy of the National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is a, an example um, that's not showing many signs of life, but this is a modern example showing that around these hot smokers, these deep sea hydrothermal systems, nowadays we have rich um, communities living. A vital difference between these metabolist theories and the ones I introduced before, um, the uh, primordial soup ones, is that here the first life would have not had the requirement for informational molecules. Rather, we're talking about a series of reactions. Those reactions could involve in complexity and then eventually some form of genetic molecules must have been incorporated if this theory is true because life today relies upon genetic molecules and how that occurred, there's lots and lots of ideas about. Um, and it remains a matter of active debate. Um, but I kind of I would note at this point that self-sustaining reaction chains could have played an important role in enriching the prebiotic soup in molecules. So these two theories could uh, of metabolist and primordial soup could actually be complementary. The proclivity that we have to kind of separate things into schools of thought is not necessarily useful or indeed accurate, and there could be other elements of truth in both of them. But those are the two major schools of thought by which abiogenesis occurred. And we are here. I'm talking to you on this video now, so we know that it did. So let's look in our next video at the steps um, that may have um, followed abiogenesis. I'll see you there in a few minutes time.
Take care.